It's my pleasure to introduce our speaker today. Some of us have had the pleasure of hearing Lewis in the past. Some of us have been over to Newport News to the Unity Church where he uh, speaks as a Unity minister. And so I'm going to tell you just a little bit about Lewis before he, he comes up here. Lewis is a metaphysical minister. He has studied various healing philosophies and techniques since the mid-1980s. He is also a spiritual engineer who works with crystals, sacred geometry, symbols, and prayers to anchor angelic divine energies to support his activities. Uh, uh, he, he created the Divine Cooperative LLC, and it's related to spiritual education and artistic expression. And on the professional front, Lewis has an MS in industrial organizational psychology. And he's working for the government as a human resources specialist. So like many of us light workers, he wears a lot of hats. And uh, he probably likes some hats better than others, depending on a given day. And he has come to us all the way from Newport News. Uh, and let's just give him a warm fellowship welcome. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's exciting to be back. I was here about a year ago, and when we were picking dates, had no idea this was going to be Sharon Solomon's birthday. So a pretty neat uh, alignment. Sharon and I have had an opportunity for a few spiritual adventures, and she's uh, quite the bright soul. So today I would like to take some time to chat with you about something I call the frequency of wholeness. It's the name I was given to describe the divine light that lives within us in perfection, within our cells, our molecules, our atoms, our electrons. It is a pathway, a frame of reference, an alignment with the absolute that is ever present and that we can work with consciously, particularly at this time in the Earth's evolutionary process, to really help us jumpstart our ability to manifest the Christ. So I'd like to start by giving you a little bit of background. Start with a reading from the New Testament I'm sure you're pretty familiar with from the first chapter of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, and without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and in that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So what is the word? This is the simplest way I know to describe it, recognizing you can't really describe it. But I'm going to try. The creative expression of God consciousness through the manifestation of existence at every level of structure and vibration, from the subatomic to the cosmic, from the physical realm to the highest heaven. Now in the New Testament, the Master Jesus is particularly associated with the word to show that he is the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy, to show that he is the Son of God, to show that he is the Savior of humanity. Interesting thing about the Master Jesus is there's so much more to that story, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. The Master Jesus, according to some metaphysical sources, is the last incarnation of the divine intelligence that was Adam, the first incarnation of a human soul on this planet. According to some, the Christ soul, the template for the perfection of intelligence through a soul in the physical form, not just on this planet, but many, many others throughout this galaxy and beyond. He was Enoch, a prophet of God in the Old Testament, one of only two people who supposedly never died. As it says in Genesis 5, Enoch walked faithfully with God, and then when he was no more, because God took him away. According to some traditions, when Enoch was taken into the heavens, he was transformed into Metatron, the highest angel in the heavens, the angel of the presence. He was Melchizedek, the king of Salem, somebody who worked with Abraham. And then, of course, Jesus, the hierarchy of the Parsean age, the prince of peace. Lots of other lifetimes, but I want to build a sense of continuity from the beginning to this current time. Now, why is the Master Jesus so important? Several reasons. First off, as I said before, it's because he's that template for what the human soul is capable of expressing in human form. 
as he was and is the expression of this word of God, and because he is the Christ soul, that is indicative of the fact that you and I share that same lineage, that same spiritual connection. Now, to the degree we're aware of it, that obviously is an infinite variable, but still, the seed is there. This divine light cannot be overcome by any illusions, any shadows, any darkness that we've manufactured, either individually or collectively. This is also helpful. I don't know about you, but I don't tend to watch the news too much anymore. It tends to be a tad disruptive. I do occasionally listen to NPR, and we'll get the cliff notes, and that's enough to know where to send some prayers. But then I'm back to other more positive focuses. Another reason Master Jesus is important is because of two things he mentioned in the New Testament. The first is in Luke 17. The kingdom of God is within you. Not something the traditional Christian church has done much with, but the metaphysical church has done a lot with it. So if the kingdom of God is within us, that means we can manifest wholeness. We can manifest divine order because it's our very nature. As one of those beautiful quotes that was picked, thank you, Susan, that was read earlier in the service, it's not like we have to find health. We have to find light. We just have to remember it and get out of our own way. Another quote from John 14, whoever believes in me will do the works that I've been doing and greater still shall they do. The key is belief, not a mental belief, but a heartfelt emotional belief. Now you've probably heard that you are God or that we are of the gods for many, many, many years. But do you believe it? And do you act on that belief? Now what's all this got to do with the frequency of wholeness? From my perspective, creation is not a past event. It is an ongoing dynamic. It is one of four activities of the presence of God in existence. Creation, balance, preservation, transformation. The energies of the word, this frequency of wholeness, contain both the creative power, but also the divine plan. Now this is important because I am suspecting that all of us had moments when we're wondering, what in the world am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? Who am I supposed to work with? How am I supposed to deal with this particular problem? Wouldn't it be interesting if a template, if a resonance, if a pattern for the answer to whatever it is you were looking for, for the most minor issue to the most major planetary conflict was already in us at a cellular level? And all we had to do was remember to pull out our Christ Consciousness Library card, access the inner cache, and go, oh, and get whatever we needed. I know that sounds a little simplistic, but isn't that the point? Aren't things simpler than we imagine with the mind? Now, when you talk about the frequency of wholeness, one way to relate to it is to think about the chakras. We're aware of the, the normal seven, and there's lots of other systems that give lots of other frames of reference. For years, I've worked with nine. So the standard seven, but then one below the feet, the earth star, black, connects us to matter. One above the head, about six inches above the crown, the soul star, white, connects us to source. That's the chakra that really already resonates with this frequency of wholeness. So it's already part of our architecture. This frequency of wholeness provides us with a loving, harmonious, peaceful frame of reference for us to connect to what we would imagine as abundance, health, perfection, divine order, whatever that might be. Now, occasionally from time to time, I get to see the things that I talk about. I half-kiddingly say that my third eye is about, yeah, I don't know, 30% open. And I'm really grateful because I occasionally meet people that it's 60, 70, 90% open. Let's just say coping with the regular world can be a little challenging. There was my friend who could see alternate dimensions. He's driving down the, har and the highway in his uh, little truck. And he said he was really distracted because another aspect wasn't on a road, wasn't in a vehicle. And this is when he had first experienced an opening. And he had to learn how to create a selector dial. So I'm grateful for the, the 30%. But when I think about this frequency of wholeness, sometimes I see it as this blinding point, this 
piercing point of light. Anywhere I look, any person, any object, because that essence, that echo of the word, is the matrix for all that is. Sometimes I hear it like a roaring waterfall, as if I was standing next to Niagara Falls. And I guess it's the way my brain processes the concept of infinite power. It fails utterly, but it does try. Sometimes I perceive it as the great silence, this vast nothingness which is more than something. And yet, I have no frame of reference in the human form. The image I get is of the Earth, this little teeny tiny blue-green marble floating in a sea of infinite dark. But it's not the dark of negativity or nothingness. It's the dark of everything beyond, behind manifestation. Try to get your brain around that. So how can we understand this frequency of wholeness? All these ideas are fine, but there's got to be some way for us to relate to it in terms of how we experience it in our own spiritual practice and our own day-to-day -day experience. So we can start to, through awareness, through intent, through imagination, connect the dots and start to experience it personally. So one easy way to think of it is this pure white light of God, where every single color of the rainbow of the spectrum contains some frequency, some aspect, some divine quality, hope, faith, Love, joy, peace, whatever it might be. Another way to think of it is, is the sacred sound of creation, which I've often heard you use in the service, Om or Om, depending on your translation. I wanted to study a little more about that, so I found this neat little story in Hindu mythology I wanted to read you about Om. In Hindu mythology, before the world began, Brahma, the creator or absolute reality, was one and said, I am one, but may I become many. The thought created a vibration that settled into a sound. That sound was Om. From this vibration, everything in the universe sprang into existence. And since we learn that the reality is beyond time, that primal sound still is, still resonates within every part and parcel of our being of the world. So every time you sound that sacred sound, you're able to resonate with that primal frequency of creation. And then, of course, as we've mentioned today, another way to understand this frequency of wholeness is divine unconditional love. Because love is not only the motivation of creation, it is the glue that holds everything together at a subatomic level. God loves, and because of that love, creation is. And all of us, of course, are part, in, part of that. Now, all these things are much better understood with the heart and the intuition than with the head and logic. But we try to engage both the mind and the heart to make progress. So why does all this matter? Why am I talking to you about this? Because at some point we figure out in our spiritual walk that the only thing we're really here to do is to become aware of and manifest our aspect of God consciousness. And every other goal, pursuit of power, possessions, money, even health and time in and of itself are somehow hollow, less than they could be. As Jesus said in Matthew 6, but seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. If you can win the lottery that's held by the divine bank, isn't everything else in there? Now last year when I was thinking about these ideas, a little poem came to me which I want to share with you which I think is a nice summary. Now my ego goes, eh, when I read this, but there's a part of me that enjoys it. It's called the infinite equation. Only God satisfies. Only light fulfills. Only truth completes. Only the infinite is sufficient. Now why were you here in the Earth School? Now, apart from contracts and agreements and all those individual group perspectives that we came in with, in general, we're here for two reasons. First off, to remember that we are divine beings, to remember our divine identity, that we're children of the one, co-creators with the Almighty. And secondly, to learn to express that creative ability, that co-creative ability, in space-time, through the lower realms, through thought, through feeling, through word, through action. 
and to do it in harmony with the divine design that we're barely aware of. It's by becoming more consciously aware of this frequency of wholeness, they can really start to understand that inner light, that inner presence, that inner identity that allow us to accomplish those goals. Now this is an expansive, empowering, freeing energy that allows us to counterbalance the frame of reference that we've all adopted. One that we needed to adopt. Because before we could remember being a being of light, before we could remember how to be a co-creator, we had to forget. And we had to forget really, really well. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I think I have a PhD in spiritual forgetfulness. <laughs> because sometimes I'm completely clueless. And then something will happen, it's like, wow. And then you realize that you always knew that. You just completely clouded it over. Now, why do we do that? Because we have to be completely submerged in the illusion of matter. So that as we reawaken to spirit, to our own direct experience, we understand why we are how we are, what we could be. If Brahman wanted to become the many as an expression of the one, isn't every single part just as amazing and grand as the original? It's like a divine hologram. Cut it into a million pieces and each piece is the whole. That's us, if we just remember. But all of us are pretty good at manufacturing illusions. We created this whole illusion of linear time. Past, present, future, almost like we're in a slideshow, flicking from one moment to the other. I seem to remember yesterday what I had for breakfast. I seem to remember or experience now. I'm thinking about tomorrow when I have to go to DC for government fun. That's my version of Yogananda's ascend to the heights and then go sweep the floor. A little bit of instant cosmic balance. We're really good at creating the illusion, the architecture of 3D space. We actually think that this is us. Go figure. As soon as you realize you're not, it's incredibly freeing. It doesn't mean I'm not responsible, but it means I have a little more access to the light than I thought. We're also really good at limiting our consciousness and our capabilities. There's all kinds of things I don't think I can do, and I really believe it. And because I believe it, because I'm my own lawgiver, so it is. You have an option to expand your frame of reference. The frequency of wholeness is one tool to help us do that. So how do we actually work with this frequency of wholeness? Seek, find, apply, experience. As soon as you know something's existing, if you're interested, you can go after it. Become your own spiritual detective. Lewis said there's a light inside every single cell. I would like to see that. I'd like to experience that. I'd like to hear the voice of God in my cellular structure. And I'd like to listen to the guidance I'm given and move myself toward health. Move myself toward abundance. Wouldn't it be kind of quirky if God was speaking through every single cell of your being, every moment of every day, and we'd been blissfully not paying attention ever? Well, not quite ever, but often. Jesus promised, if you seek, you will find. It is there. It's just up to us to work with it. Now, this is the topic for this workshop I'll be doing this afternoon, Dynamics of Spiritual Healing. I will be building a very big grid right over in this area that's designed to anchor different aspects of the energies of this frequency of wholeness, working with the angels and the five elements. If after the service you'd like to come and say hello to the core of that grid, right behind me is a beautiful 70 pound quartz sphere from Brazil, anchored to the energies of Metatron, the angel of the presence. So feel free to come up and say hi. That will be the center point of a pretty big grid. It's actually the biggest thing I've ever built. I've been working on it for about a year and a half, and I'm very excited to be able to debut it here. It just sort of worked out that way. During that workshop, I'll also be covering, very briefly, because literally you could spend weeks or years studying these ideas, what's the purpose of disease? What are the basic principles of spiritual healing? How do I move toward greater health and wholeness? 
What kind of divine assistance is available to me to help with every issue, every illness, every challenge? And what are the four stages of spiritual healing? Again, the model that I've been given, there are 100,000 models out there. Find the one that works with you and go for it. I hope that I can see some of you at this event. And if you are not able to come, at least come up and say hello the elemental friend here. Take a minute and get an imprint. Imagine at the core of that crystal, there was literally a white fire star, because that's what's there energetically. Okay, so now I'd like to take you through probably a little longer than you're used to meditation to help you individually connect to this frequency of wholeness. And as Sharon Solomon mentioned to me this morning, maybe help some people in this room become a little more aware of that inner light than they were when they walked in, including me. So I invite you to make yourself comfortable. Let me see if I can figure out how to work this machine. Get the music going. I invite you all to get very relaxed, take a nice deep breath, and just let the world go. All your fears, all your doubts, all your concerns, all your worries, just give them the hands of the angels for a few minutes, and just let yourself be here peacefully in this space. Take a nice deep breath, in through the mouth, excuse me, in through the nose, out through the mouth and just let it go. I invite you to close your eyes. I'm going to say a little prayer, invite a few angelic friends to help us, and then take you on a journey into yourself, into your cells, your molecules, your atoms and electrons. Beloved Father, Mother God, beloved I am that I am expressed through all life. We are grateful for the opportunity to gather together in this force field of awareness, of Christ consciousness. We call to you, beloved Metatron, angel of the presence. Beloved Gabriel, angel of purity and hope. Beloved Jophia, angel of wisdom and illumination. Beloved Omnia, angel of oneness. We ask you, dear ones, to send your angels to unfold this group right now. Stand behind every single person in this sanctuary and anchor the awareness of that inner light. Anchor the feeling of connectedness, of wholeness, of health, of harmony into minds and hearts and bodies. And we thank you for gifting the people here with whatever it is you see they need and require to manifest their divine plan one day at a time. And so it is in God's most holy name, I am. I invite you to imagine that within every single cell of your body, from head to toe, there is this frequency of wholeness, this pure white light of God, this creative energy of the Word pulsating in through every part of you. See it in your physical body. See it in your bones, in your organs, in your blood, in your nerves. See yourself from head to toe, enveloped, filled with light. Take a breath, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Feel the light. Feel it in the etheric body, flowing through every chakra, the soul star, the crown, the third eye, the throat, the heart, solar plexus, sacral, root, Earth star. Through all the minor chakras and every joint and every organ, through all the meridians, breathe in the life force, the light. Experience that energy, that frequency of wholeness radiating out in every direction all around you, in your emotional body, in your mental body, charging all those thoughts, all those memories, all those feelings with the light of harmony, peace, hope, 
vitality, wholeness. See yourself more connected to your true self, your I am presence. Imagine that a beam of pure white light flows down from above, quote unquote, right through your crown, right to your heart, right down into the earth. And help yourself become more aware of this frequency of wholeness. Now every chakra is said to have a note and a vowel sound. So I'm going to turn this music down a little bit. Just keep your eyes closed for just a minute. I invite you to focus your attention on your crown chakra. The note is B. I'm going to play that note. The vowel sound is E, 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 per Jonathan Goldman and Healing Sounds. So I'm going to play this note. I'm going to say E, and then I invite us to all together say it slowly three times. And as we intone that vowel, just imagine that that light is flowing down through the crown, charging your consciousness in every part of you. And allow yourself to connect to that frequency of wholeness. Here we go. Take a moment to breathe in that light. And in particular for any part of the physical form that is giving you trouble. Aches, pains, illness, issues. Take a moment to feel that light anchored through that part of you. And whenever you're ready, I invite you to come back into this room, back into this space. And as you look around throughout the rest of the day, look for that light that's in the heart of all things. And so it ends. So bring yourself back into this space. When you're ready, open your eyes, move your hands and feet. and be at peace. I hope to see as many of you who are so inclined at the workshop at 2 o'clock. I will be in spiritual engineer architecture mode from about 12.30 to 2. As I said, come up and say hello at some point. Thank you.